Welcome to this IG investment interview. Now today we're talking EVs and perhaps more crucially the charging infrastructure behind this booming industry. Conrad Sippel is head of research at Selective, a provider of stock market indices. Now Selective provides the index for Han ETF's electric vehicle charging infrastructure ETF. Thank you so much for joining us. Now Conrad, I want to start off with this data point which is really cool. One in 10 cars currently being sold is electric. Have you seen this data point? Yep, that's in the UK, right? I yeah. mean, I've seen I've seen much better numbers than that. So, I would say, is it cool or is it too low? Yeah. So, given that we're all working towards a net zero future, that uh, by 2035 we're going to stop selling fossil fuel based uh, vehicles. Well, um, that depends on the infrastructure, right? Do we have enough infrastructure, charging points, uh, and the like to support this growth? Uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, and, and that's kind of why, why we're here. So we think that the expansion of the EV charging infrastructure is like a key puzzle piece in, in making that electric revolution work. So take that 10% number. Right now, I don't have the exact UK number, but it should be about 4 to 5% of, of vehicles on the roads are electric. Um, there's an EU study a few years ago that said that you need um, about one charging point for every 10 electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're be well, well below that and I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen some of the headlines over Christmas with EV drivers queuing and you know that's actually you know that happens on peak time so at the moment the infrastructure is probably just about sufficient to sustain a fleet of EVs that's four to five percent of the overall market but um, EVs are kind of like a luxury good right now most of the EVs are like you know expensive and cool Teslas which are owned by an affluent set of owners that have their own driveways and they have wall boxes at home. Most of them can probably also charge at their office. So charging is, is less of an issue. But now you mentioned 10%, right? So as we have 10% new vehicle registrations, that number is going to go up. But think about 2040 when for five years no non-electric vehicle would have been sold. Uh, we're going to go up to something like 50, 60% of EVs on the road. And that's going to be everybody. You know? so, so people who park on the streets and where are they going to charge? Uh, so, so we need a massive expansion of the charging infrastructure. What's being done, Conrad, about the speed of charging as well? Because if we have enough charging points, it's really about how fast can I charge my car, right? Yeah, so it's a, it's a mix. So, so you need enough fast charging points. And, and if you look at some of the statistics about how many charging points already exist today, which is a ridiculously low number, a lot of them are 11 or 22 kilowatt hour charges where with a sort of you know, medium to top, top range EV, you would be charging six to eight hours to, to get your battery back to full. What we need is 150 kilowatt, uh, 350 kilowatt charges that can get um, the battery of a car from 20 to 80 percent in, in a matter of five to 10 minutes. And that's the infrastructure structure that really needs to be built out. It needs to be along the highways um, so that we can we can comfortably get on an EV. And ultimately, like you, if you get into your petrol-based car today, you don't think about refueling, right? You, you, even if your tank is only 20% full and you want to go all the way to Scotland, you don't worry about that. You just get in, you drive, and when the car says, oh, I need refueling, you just stop and refuel. If you own an EV and you only have 20% of battery left and you want to get to Scotland, first thing you do is, is you research all the charging stations and you mm -hmm. hope that they work. So, mm -hmm. you know, like the whole feeling yeah. of it needs to change if, you know, the EV is going to be the, the mainstay rather than the exception on the roads. So when is the tipping point? When are we going to get to that point where you don't have to plan your journey according to the charging points? So I think, unfortunately, that is still quite far away. I mean, is I think it five we, years, ten years. What are we looking at? So I'm, I think you know the, the sales bans kick in in 2035. Um, if you look at countries where that sales ban is five years in advance, like the the Netherlands, um, where there's already a much better charging infrastructure. I mean, uh, drive along a Dutch motorway and you'll see charging station after charging station, just like you used to see in gas stations. So it's, it's really uh, mind blowing how how far they are in there. And and you know they're five years ahead of us. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably going to be around 2025 or so that we're really going to see a massive expansion. But what I also think is, is that it's really important that all the policy makers and all, all the decision makers that want to drive an electric revolution look beyond just giving sales incentives for buying EVs and really start getting into 
the game of um, getting charging stations done. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is if you if you read the news, you'll occasionally see this oh fantastic uh, supermarket chain A is 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 putting 500 charges in their parking lots, and City Council B has decided to install 500 charges across the whole town. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to need hundreds of thousands of chargers in the UK alone. Mm -hmm. And I don't really see anybody coming out and saying, hey, I'm going to build 50,000 chargers in the south of England. Right. And, and you know, it's th those sort of size of projects that we start, need to start tackling now mm -hmm. so that by 2025, 2030, we have the infrastructure in place to sustain all the cars that are coming. So the horse before the cart, really. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, the, on the car side, the transformation has begun. Mm. All the car makers have really locked in on, onto the electric vehicle. I mean, if, you, if you take Volvo, I mean, they will not sell a non-electric vehicle after 2030. And a lot of the other car makers are planning to sell mostly electric vehicles. So to some extent, the car making industry has run ahead. And you know, there's potentially a rude awakening if all these cars get rolled out and, and there's no charging infrastructure. Let's broaden it out now, Conrad, to other jurisdictions, other countries, other governments, which have done better uh, or worse uh, on building out this EV infrastructure. Yeah. So interestingly, one market that's been pretty good is China. Yes, um, that's uh, to support their, uh, 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 their uh, uh, hope also, to be the first, uh, you know, the top EV maker in the world. Right, I mean, there, there's that. There's also way more government action with regards to building um, charging infrastructure. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a big point. And I think, you know, what we're seeing in, in, in the rest of the world is it's mostly left to the private sector. And it's kind of governments sort of dishing out few, um, few uh, incentives, um, like, you know, the, the, the Biden infrastructure package does contain a substantial amount of money to be invested into electric vehicle infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But the sort of platform for making those commitments to actual execution, I still see, see a lot of room for improvement there. And, and, you know, this is kind of why we're talking about an electric vehicle charging infrastructure index here, is that there is actually already quite a number of companies, um, you know, private companies, essentially stock listed companies, that are basically driving um, the expansion of that infrastructure. And that will, of course, benefit from um, increased EV adoption and more public charging sessions. And speaking of the index and the infrastructure theme, just want to uh, bring our uh, viewers' attention to this chart here, which is the Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure uh, ETF. Uh, as you can see here, uh, highs of 699 uh, and also uh, 701 here. Uh, this is, of course, the sterling uh, chart, and uh, we're looking at about 377.88 there. Can you talk us through how you're linked with this ETF, how investors can give exposure to this space right so I mean this is kind of what we do at Selective we we try to find um, futuristic themes um, growth potential growth themes um, that can be invested using kind of you know investing in regular stocks and rather than having to, to stock pick um, if you use a, a passive vehicle uh, and in this case an ETF um, basically allows an investor to gain exposure to a theme um, without having to um, without having to buy the individual stocks and without having to rebalance and, and follow the kind of news new entrants uh, and so on um, uh, on, a, on a permanent basis so so we try to look for um, themes where we believe there is a certain amount of growth potential at the same time there is enough listed companies that are actually active in that theme and then we package them together in, in an index. And then we work with a partner, in this case it's, it's Han ETF, who mm -hmm. will actually um, you know, create an investment fund which people can, can, can ultimately buy. But you know, what, what, what we've, we see here is, is we sort of see a, a strong underlying fundamental mm -hmm. in a sense of that you know, the um, electric revolution is more or less put into the law books uh, mm -hmm. with, those, with those sales bans coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, so we know that we're going to go from 4% electric vehicles to 50% plus. Mm -hmm. We know that those vehicles are going to have to charge. So we kind of know that the number of charging sessions, which is kind of the, the typical KPI, how, how these companies make money, mm -hmm. is going to go up exponentially between now and, um, and uh, 2035, 2040. So, you know, and here's, a, here's an opportunity to invest into some of the stocks that, um, that are in that industry and, and may benefit from that growth. Now, this index is still very concentrated, right? 12 holdings. Um, why is that? 
Well, it's simply that there's a lack of <laughs> pure play companies um, that are big enough. I mean, you know, when, when we build indices, um, given that it needs to be investable, there are certain constraints in there that the company has to have a certain size and a, a minimum stock exchange turnover. Otherwise, you end up being in very tiny, tiny micro caps. And mm -hmm. if, you know, sufficient volume comes together, that, that can be problematic. So mm -hmm. there is more companies in this space, but those 12 are basically the ones that are kind of big enough to, to sustain an ETF. Um, and it's it's a Nietzsche theme. I mean, you, you, it basically, you know, it's, this isn't a general tech theme, uh, even though it has sort of performed pretty much in line with the decline of general tech uh, in, in the last year. Uh, it's, it's, it's one that really um, accumulates the idea of investing in a very specific growth theme, you know, that, that has its very specific risks, mm -hmm. but it has very little overlap with um, other tech indices. It's, it's really concentrated on the theme of EV charging infrastructure. Right. And then last question, uh, Conrad, uh, if investors and traders uh, watching this wanted to get exposure to this space, what are the pros and cons of going with the, you know, thematic versus, you know, pure play, I guess, higher risk, right? But bigger return, potentially, if they went for these small stocks instead of going for indices or an ETF. So the, the perennial question of risk and return, right? So, so you, yes, you have a more narrow theme basket um, that's very much tied to one growth story, a growth story that we at Selective like, uh, but it's, it's down to every single individual investor to kind of look at the numbers and make a decision for themselves on whether they, they buy into that or not. And then, yes, I mean, if you buy a very broad automotive-themed um, uh, basket or you look at tech in general, I mean, you're going to have, you're going to be exposed to a lot of different trends. If you go with 12 pure play companies that are in the EV charging space, um, you're going to uh, you know, be tied to the performance of that particular sector, which comes back to your original research as to say, do I believe in that story or do I not believe in that story? And, and you know, that gives you a more direct exposure to that. But yes, it's definitely more high risk uh, than if you went with a broader basket. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Conrad Sibyl, uh, Head of Research at Selective, provider of stock market indices, uh, and they provide the index for Han ETF's electric vehicle charging infrastructure ETF. This is IG.